to do today. Uh, so on this example four on page four, uh, we're going to do several things with this. So we're going to take this price demand function, which I gave you right here. That's a price demand function. P is the price. X is the demand. X is always the number of things that you sell. P is the unit price. So first of all, I would start by writing down the elasticity formula. Okay, I'm, whether we remember that or not, let's see if I remember it. I think I do. It's negative P times, and then F prime of P all over F of P. So remember what we're talking about is this little piece right here is called the relative rate of change. Okay, so what you're really doing is you're taking that relative rate of change and you're multiplying it by the negative of the price. That's, that's what you're doing when you're doing elasticity. So to begin with, um, this is a derivative that's pretty easy to do in your head. So for the elasticity, we'd have negative P. Okay, let's see if we can do this. What do you think the derivative of that is? You remember? Okay, and then you got a negative one. You're right, good. Okay, we know that that's zero. The derivative of negative P is the number in front. You got a power rule here, so that would be minus, and if you double 0.05, that gives you 0.10 P like that. Okay, so what you have then, your derivative is negative one minus 0.10 P. You can just write 0.1 also on that. Then you divide by the original function, uh, 875 minus p minus 0.05p to the second. That's your elasticity right there. You don't really have to simplify it, but it's worthwhile to just distribute the negative p through the numerator. Okay, so let's go ahead and at least just do that, and that's all you're going to do. So we'd have positive p and then positive 0.05. 10p to the second, all over 875 minus p minus 0.05p to the second. Okay, so that is your elasticity, and we're going to, you know, in this example, we're actually going to do a little bit of a few things with that elasticity. Okay, all right. So anybody have a question? How I did that? So if you can do the derivative on this, uh, there's nothing to it really. So it's it's pretty simple to do. Let me take a screenshot of this because I need to use this on the next page. Okay, so that's our elasticity function. Uh, when you're doing your test two next week, you know, you're going to have to know how to do elasticity. You'll need to know that formula, but you'll be able to bring in half sheet of notes. That'll be an important formula to know, or at least to have written down. Okay, all right. So let's see, I guess I already, here's my screenshot. Okay, so what we're going to do on the next page is we're going to um, identify whether we're elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic, and I'll have to review that a little bit. So basically, the idea is there's three things can happen if uh, ah. okay. Well, at least the recording is still up, so that's good. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so let me just uh, remind you of these three things right here. Okay, first of all, if your elasticity is equal to one, that means that you're, you're, we call that unit elasticity. And what that really means is it really means that the, that the revenue is, is at a maximum. Okay, so what we're going to do is kind of, we always compare the elasticity to one. One is special because the revenue is maximized. And then if your elasticity is greater than one, then you're called, that's elastic. And then if um, your elasticity is less than one, and really it's between zero, you can have negative elasticity, but um, we're not gonna really concern ourselves with that, then we would say that we're inelastic. Okay, all right, so that's just kind of what we're going to be doing, and then we'll go back and review what it means for it to be elastic and inelastic, okay? 
All right, so what you want to go ahead and do on this part B is take the elasticity function and plug in 50. So we're going to do E of 50. We'll need to use our calculator. So that is uh, 50 plus 0 0.10, I think, is what it was, and then 50 to the second, and then all over 875 minus 50 minus 0 0.05 times 50 to the second. Okay, so we're just gonna get that plugged in. And then what we need to do is just kind of work with the calculator. And I usually just do the, like the numerator and um, denominator separately on my calculator. You don't need to get a decimal answer necessarily or anything. Uh, so let's see, that'll be 50 plus 0.10 or just 0.1 you can put in and then 50 to the second. Okay, like that, and that'll give us the numerator, so that's 300. Okay, and I'll do the denominator basically the same way. I'll do 875 uh, minus 50 minus 0 0.05 times 50 to the second, and that'll give me 700. Okay, so that's what you want to do. Now, you don't have to change that to a decimal. I mean, is that less than one or greater than one? That's less than one, okay? The numerator is less than the denominator, so that's less than one. So that would mean $50, uh, that's an inelastic price, okay? Uh, and I'll go back in a minute and I'll review something after we do these problems about, we'll talk about what inelastic means, okay? All right, now we'll do the same thing with $80 now. So we're going to do the elasticity at $80. So again, you just plug into the elasticity that I got highlighted in yellow. So that is 80 plus 0 0.1 times 80 to the second. Uh, just do that on the calculator. And then 875 minus 80 minus 0 0.05 times 80 to the second. Okay, and I'll pull up the calculator and just do that like I did before. So we're going to do 80 uh, plus 0.1 uh, times 80 to the second and record that. So that'll be 720. Okay, then I'll do the denominator, uh, 875 minus 80 minus 0 0.05 times 80 to the second. And let's see, is that 720? No, 475. Okay. All right. So is that bigger than, uh, greater than one or less than one? Okay. So that is elastic. Okay. You don't have to change that to a decimal. A lot of times students do, but it's not really necessary. So we would know that $80 is the price when you are elastic. And inelastic and elastic can kind of make predictions about how Price changes affect demand. That's one way to look at that. Okay. All right. Any questions about what I'm doing? Okay. Real simple. If you can get the elasticity correct, then you won't have any trouble doing this. And you'll do this same kind of thing on your test next week. Okay. okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, what happens on this is um, $70. We're going to go ahead and just do the same thing on this. I tried to make this example so there's one of each. So this is probably going to be the unit elastic one. Let's plug it in and find out. So we'll do 70 plus 0 0.1 times 70 to the second. And then 875 minus 70 minus 0 0.05 times 70 to the second. So I'm pretty sure this one's the one that turns out to be unit elastic. Okay, so uh, again, just do 70 plus 0.1 times 70 to the second, and that'll be 560, okay? All right, now I'm pretty sure the denominator is 560, okay? I've already worked this out. So if you do the calculator in the bottom, you're going to get that. So since this is equal to 1, that means this one is unit elastic. What does that mean about the revenue? What did I say? 
It's at a maximum. So $70 is the price that would uh, make the revenue at a maximum. Okay. All right. So that's how you do that then. I want to see if there's any questions on that. And then I want to go back, you know, in the notes a little further, just kind of remind you of what, what this means. Basically, um, inelastic and elastic, um, if, if you raise a price or lower a price, it's either going to, the demand's either going to go in the same direction, go up or go, or go in an opposite direction. So what I had put in the, the notes, I want to just scroll back here and kind of talk about this and just review this a little bit. So if you're inelastic, everything goes in the same direction. So if you increase the price, the revenue increases. Or if you decrease the price, the revenue will decrease. So that's what's going to happen. Like if you look at uh, what we just figured out on this $50. So if we change that to $51, we would expect the revenue to increase. If we decreased it to $49, we'd expect the revenue to decrease. Okay. What happens on um, the revenue function is, is you're comparing it to one where that revenue is maximized. That's the idea. And then back at um, elastic, elastic just goes in the opposite direction. So if you increase the price, you expect the revenue to go in the opposite direction and vice versa. Okay, so that's what we mean by that. All right, any uh, questions about what we did to find elasticity or, or anything? Okay, so try to think of it this way. Uh, greater than one means big. So you're stretching, so that's elastic. Less than one, you're shrinking, you're small. That's the way I remember it, okay? Okay, so I am going to have you all do the next three problems. I'll, uh, and I'll go ahead and put up the elasticity formula. I'm going to pause my recording. And you have to do the elasticity on each example, okay? And then just plug in the price I give, and then you're going to answer whether it's elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic. Okay, and I'll leave this up here. And there's your elasticity formula. If you need to write that down, you can go ahead and start working on those. And I'll come around and see if you're on the right track. And uh, I think just about every paper I looked at, only, only thing that I really noticed when I was walking around and checking your work is one of the things you got to do is make sure that you get you know, get your elasticity before you plug the number in. I was kind of seeing some of you were plugging the number in, you know, either at kind of the same time or even before you did that. Okay, so you got to do that first. So you want to check and make sure that you got this is your elasticity function. Okay, and anytime you do elasticity, negative P is always a part of your formula. You don't do anything with negative P. That's just what you do. Then you write your derivative. So the derivative of this function was negative three, and then it's over the original function. So that negative P, you, when you do these problems, there's three parts of this. There's the negative three, there's the negative P, there's the derivative, there's the original function, okay? So when you plug that in, the $72 in, uh, you should have got 216 over 85. You can change that to a decimal if you want to, but you don't have to. I just need to see on your paper that you know that it's greater than one. And that's good enough if you have that fraction. You don't have to reduce the fraction or anything. That's good enough. So that's elastic. And remember what that means is, is things go in an opposite direction. So basically what would happen at this case, if you did like $73, which would be a price increase, then you would expect the revenue to go down. Okay. If you did a price decrease like $71, then you'd expect the revenue to go up. Okay, That's what happens when you're at a, a point in the price demand function where it's elastic. Okay, All right, so I think everybody got that okay. I didn't see any problems with that. Um, here's what you have on the next two. Okay, so we want to kind of get these, go over these, and just check and see if you got these okay. So... With um, with this example, number two, the two things I'd want to see, just make sure you have this is your elasticity function. You end up with 2p squared over 2005 minus p squared. Okay. 
And then when you plug this in, you're plugging in the price of 13, doing the arithmetic, you would have got 338 over 1836, okay? And that means that that is inelastic. So what this would mean is like, if you change that 30, $13, if you change that to 14, then the revenue goes up. If you made the price go down, then the revenue goes down. Okay, that's how that works. That's just the price demand function. It, 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 it's different at different places. When that elasticity is one, then that's where that revenue maximizes. Okay. All right. The uh, third one, you want to make sure that you got, this is your elasticity. Now, I do want to mention something on this too, and you don't need to write this down, but a lot of times I'll see students do this, and I think this is unnecessary. So you could factor a five out of the bottom. And if you uh, took that out of the bottom, uh, you would have this. I, I just don't think that's necessary. In fact, I wouldn't, I would discourage you from even doing that because if you make a mistake, then it's going to mess up your problem. So once you get your elasticity, don't worry about factoring and reducing it any further. There's no point in that. I mean, you could cross that 10 over 5 out and get 2, and that's still fine. It's just totally unnecessary, okay? All right, so that one worked out to be, and I got a mistake on there, that should have been 1,000 over 1,000, so that's equal to 1, that's unit elastic. What does that tell you about the revenue? Maximum, okay? So basically, your revenue is at a maximum uh, when you hit that, uh, that point. That is the optimum price based on that uh, price demand function, okay? All right, do we have any questions? You all did good, okay? And you'll see the same kind of thing on your test. If you know the elasticity formula, um, can do the derivatives, you're not gonna have very complicated derivatives on problems like this. Uh, so the derivatives are pretty simple, it makes the problem pretty simple, okay? Any questions? Okay, all right, very good. All right, so we'll go down to Example five, it gets a little bit more, it's a little bit more involved in the next examples on here. Um, so generally, on something like example five and example six, or I guess the second part of this, generally these kind of things, uh, that's usually what I give for extra credit on the test. It's a little bit more work involved, but it's a pretty important thing to know how to do. So with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to use the price demand equation to find the values of P that make this whatever the given condition of elasticity is. So in this particular problem, you're given this price demand function. And what we're going to do is find the price that would cause the demand to have unit elasticity. Okay, any suggestions about how I would go about solving that? Just curious. You'd set something equal to one. What would you set equal to one? What did you do in the last problem? You just found elasticity, right? So you would find the elasticity function, then you would set that to one. Why are we setting it to one? Because that's what a unit elasticity is, okay? So we're going to go ahead and start this problem off by going ahead and doing your elasticity, okay? So again, I'll write the formula down. You don't have to write the formula down, you can go ahead and just do that now if you want to. So again, when you're doing elasticity, think of it as there are three parts of the problem. Negative P, you just write that down, and then you're going to have these three pieces right here. So what you're going to have is negative P, the derivative of this function is negative 3, and then the original function is 165 minus 3P. So we end up getting positive 3p over 165 minus 3p, okay? So you start that way, you go ahead and get your elasticity, and you all did a great job on that earlier, so that's not, shouldn't be a, a problem. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take this elasticity, and you want to set this equal to 1 and solve that equation and that'll give you the price. That's it basically giving you the price that's going to maximize the revenue on this. All right. So let's think about how we solve this equation. What do you think you would do to, as your next step to solve an equation like this? I got a fraction. So 
multiplied by the denominator, right? We want to get rid of that denominator. Okay, so that's what you're going to deal with here is anytime you, you have a, a, an equation that's got a fraction, just get rid of the fraction, get rid of that denominator. And when you do that, you're going to have 3p is equal to, and on the right side, you distribute by 1, you're just going to get 165 minus 3p. So that'll be a pretty basic equation to solve then. Now you could add 3p to both sides. You could just move the 3p to the other side if you want to. Uh, you're just trying to isolate the, the p on both sides. So you would end up getting 6p is equal to 165. And then what you would do is you would divide by 6. And then that would give you what your optimum charging price is here. So we'll see what that is then. So that's how you can, you can use elasticity to find the, the optimum price. So 165 divided by 6, we'll just round that to two decimals. So that would be uh, $27.50. That is your optimum pri uh, price that produces uh, the maximum revenue. Once you go beyond that or below that, your your, your uh revenue is going to be less. Okay, so that's how you do that then. All right, any problem with that? Yep. No, uh, that, that what you're given, remember the revenue is X times P. Okay, and what you would have to do to actually find the revenue on this problem is you would have to um, take this this thing, which is 165 minus 3p, and then multiply that by p. That would be one way to get the revenue, okay? Uh, the other way would be to solve that for p, and you would still be doing x times p, okay? So you don't have to ever find the revenue to figure out what the max is, okay? And elasticity is usually a little bit more less work on a problem like this to maximize revenue. Because what you'd have to do is once you get the revenue, you would have to, um, you know, you would have some sort of a graph like we've looked at that would be quadratic that would have a maximum like that, okay? So if you plug in 2750, that actually gives you the demand X, okay? That would give you how many things you sell at that price to produce that maximum. That's what that does. X is, is the quantity of things that you're selling, okay? All right? Okay, any questions there? Okay. Okay, next problem's got a little bit more involved in it. Now, this is kind of what I like to do on, on extra credit, and I like to see people trying to do extra credit problems on, the, on the, the test. I usually just give you something that's a little bit more involved, and this is a good example of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this price demand function, and we're going to determine... Uh, the price that, that makes the prices or the range of prices where it's elastic and the range of prices where it's inelastic. So you have to start this problem off just by finding elasticity. So we're going to start by doing our elasticity formula. So go ahead and start on that. Okay. And you don't have to keep writing down this formula. I, as I'm teaching, I just like to refer to what I'm doing here. Okay, so we've got this as your formula. So again, you always write negative P down. That's always in your formula. What's the derivative of this function in your head? Negative 4P, good. And then the original function is 216 minus 2P to the second. Okay, so that will give me 4P to the second over 216 minus 2p to the second. You don't need to simplify that any further. I mean, you could take a 2 out of the denominator, but it's a total waste of time, okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to do this. We're going to set the elasticity that we just got equal to 1. We're going to find where it's unit elastic, so we have to do that. So this will be pretty similar to what we did before. We're going to do 4p squared over 216 minus 2p to the second is equal to 1. Okay, what do I need to do to solve that equation? Multiply by the denominator, get rid of the denominator, good. Okay, so we want to go ahead and do that. 
Okay, this equation is quadratic, so there will be a little bit more involved in solving the equation. This is kind of like some, some college algebra kind of things you've done in the past. So on the left side, you'd have 4p squared. On the right side, you would have 216 minus 2p to the second like that. Okay, what do I need to do to finish solving this? Add 2p squared to both sides. You want to get the p's on one side and the number on the other. So, yeah, you can do this. Okay, and then once we do that, we're going to have 6p to the second is equal to 216. Okay, what's next? Divide by 6. Okay. Uh, is that maybe 36? Okay, it's 36. Okay, then what? Square root. OK, now what happens, you know, when you're you know, learning in college algebra, you when you do a square root of both sides, you get two answers. You get a, a plus six and a minus six. But there is no such thing as negative price. So we don't worry about the negative. It's just our price is is six dollars. So that is what makes this thing unit elastic. OK, so that so you're doing uh, kind of the same thing I did on the on the previous example on that then. Any questions about what I did? Okay, all right. Now, the next thing we're gonna do there, I'm gonna teach you two ways to do this. Uh, one way is a little bit more algebraic, the other way is a little bit more with, um, with, with graphing, and on your test, I'd let you do this either way. So what I'm gonna do, Next, on step three, this is kind of an analytic way to do this. We have to do one more thing. We have to figure out, we have to find uh, what makes uh, the elasticity undefined. Okay, and you can't ignore this part of the problem because what's going to happen is we're only going to be interested in where we have positive elasticities. So if you look at your, your elasticity function right here, if you're going to figure out what makes it undefined, you've got to look at the denominator. Because you know a denominator of a fraction can't be zero. So what you have to do is you have to solve this equation. So what you want to do is just write down the denominator and then set that equal to zero. And that will be kind of a price. We're not going to consider any price past that. When I graph this, you'll, you'll get a good understanding why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2p squared to both sides, uh, solving a quadratic equation. So that's 216 is equal to 2p to the second. I'm going to solve it just like I did the last one. I'll divide by 2. That will give 108 equals p squared. Then I'm going to do the square root of both sides. And then I'm just going to round that on the, the calculator to two decimals since we're talking about prices here. So if I put in square root of 108, that's probably 10 point something. So that's going to be about, we'll just round that to $10.39. And then I'll show you what you want to do with this next. Okay, so you have to do that as well on the problem. you got to consider... Uh, the, that's the biggest price that we're going to consider. Once you get past 1039, the problem really doesn't make any sense anymore in this context because you're going to get into negative elasticity. Okay? Any problem with what I did on step three? Okay. All right. So here's what you do to finish up the problem. And this is just one technique. Then in a minute, I'll show you how you can use your calculator to figure this whole thing out. So what you want to do is draw a number line and start at p equals zero. Then you want to look at p equals six dollars. At six dollars is where the revenue is at a max. And then we want to look at the price of ten dollars and thirty nine cents. Because see, all we're going to do is we're going to consider what's going on in between 0 and 1039. So we don't worry about what's going on out there, and we don't worry about negative prices, obviously. Okay? So what we do is we do 
we just do test points. Okay, and what's going to happen is if you pick any number between 0 and 6 and plug it into the elasticity, you're going to get something either less than 1 or greater than 1. That's a guarantee, okay, because 6 is where there's a maximum. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pick a, pick a number here. I'm going to pick like 1, and it doesn't matter what you pick as long as it's between 0 and 6. Then I'm going to plug it into the elasticity that I have in part 1. So we're going to do 4 times 1 to the second over 216 minus 2 times 1 to the second like that. That's easy enough you can do it in your head. So use an easy test point. Okay, so that's going to be 4 over, uh, that would be what, 214. Okay, so that's less than 1. So what does that tell you about the elasticity? If you're less than 1, which is it? Inelastic, okay? So between 0 and $6, you're inelastic. That's where things are moving in the same direction. An increase in price increases revenue. A decrease in price decreases revenue. That's what that means. So that will be, when we write our answer to this problem, we're going to write this in intervals. So what we're going to say is we are inelastic on the interval 0 to $6. And you want to use parentheses on that interval. We don't include those. Okay, we just exclude those. Six is unit elasticity. Okay, now you can pretty well predict what's going to happen next, but we're going to go ahead and just work this out. So take a test point, anything you want to between six and ten dollars and thirty-nine cents. I'm going to go with ten because ten's easy to calculate with, but it doesn't matter. You can use your calculator. So I'm going to go four times ten to the second over two hundred and sixteen. Uh, minus 2 times 10 to the second. And what will happen on that is that would be 400 in the numerator. Uh, denominator would be, I think, uh, 216 minus 200, so that's 16. So that's greater than 1, so that means that you're elastic. <clears throat> okay? So then our conclusion is going to be that we're elastic between the prices of $6 and $10.39. Yes? Uh, which number are you talking about? Like the 10? Oh, 400 over 16, sorry. And that's greater than one. And, the, and that, you just can do all that on your, on your calculator then. So this right here would be the answer to the problem right there. Now what I'm gonna show you is how you can do just about all of this on a calculator anyway. And, you know, really in the modern world, you want to know how to use technology to, to do this then, okay? So you'll see this like on next Monday's test. I do this as extra credit just because it's, it's a little bit time consuming, but you can do this this way by making a table like that, or you can do it graphically. And if you do it graphically, you just have to draw a graph. So why don't you get out your calculator and I'll show you how you can do this problem graphically. Okay, it's actually pretty easy to do this. Um, so what happens is um, you, have to, you have to figure out the unit elasticity. You can often do that on your calculator though. So what I want you to do is go ahead and graph the elasticity function. Okay, so just go to Y1 and put in the elasticity function I've kind of got written over there how you want to put it in. You do want to make sure the numerator is in parentheses. That's real important if you do it this way. And then make sure the denominator is in its own set of parentheses, because if you don't do that, then it isn't going to graph the right thing. See, I'm already screwing up there. So I need to go parentheses uh, 216 and then minus uh, 2 x to the second. We were using x instead of p. It doesn't matter though. Okay, so now what we want to do on the window is set your window up like this. Um, all we're going to do is go from zero and we, we got to go to 1039. I'm just going to go to 11. Okay, just or you can go to 11 or 12 or something like that. Okay, I'm going to scale that by one. Now for your y's, you're, you're talking about elasticity. So elasticity is, is, is either one, 
between zero and one or bigger than one. So for that reason, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go zero to two, you know, pick a number that's bigger than one, and then that would be the best way to do your, your window like that. Now, what we're going to have is we're going to have the price demand function, and this is not the revenue that I'm graphing, so don't be confused on that. Okay, so we got that. All right, now the next thing I want you to do is go back to Y2 and put in one. So just graph one, which is a horizontal line anyway. So you want to graph that out. And this right here will answer it. If you can figure out what that price right there is, then you know you're going to be inelastic because the graph is below one. Okay, so this region right here is inelastic. You can actually use your intersection command to do this problem too. So I'm going to write down the keystrokes. I have shown this before. So you could go second trace. See, so if you do it this way on the test, I'm okay with this. I mean, use technology to find that unit elastic price. So you just go to option five, which is intersect. I have shown you how to do that before, I think. I think we've done that before. Just press enter. Usually what will happen is a cursor will pop up on one of the curves. Uh, first curve, it, it's asking the question. First curve, it's on there. You see the cursor. You always just make sure that that cursor, if it needs to be moved close to that, then just do that. Then press enter. A new cursor comes up on the other curve. Press enter. It says guess. Press enter. And see six pops up. So that six is your unit elasticity price like that. So what you would have, what I would want a student to do if they chose to do a problem like this totally on the calculator, what I would want you to do is just draw out a graph, kind of sketch a graph like this, and then what you would be, then you could do this in your head. This is where you're inelastic right there, and this is where you're elastic. So you find that unit elasticity there. Now, the, the problem that you're going to get into with the 10, the, that 1039, you pretty well got to do that by hand. You have to do that. But I want to show you what happens on the table of values here. So if I go second graph, this is what happens. If you kind of look in here, in between 0 and 6, you can see all of these, the elasticity is a decimal between 0 and 1. So you can tell that's where we're in elastic. Now, check this out. Now, what happens is once we get past that $10.39, what's happening to the elastic? It's becoming negative. So it doesn't make sense in the context of this problem. So once you get beyond that $10.39, you're going to have negative numbers. That's why we look at that. Okay. So the, the problem, the function breaks down after $10.39. Does that make any sense to you? Okay, so again, you can graph the elasticity and find that intersection point and then easily in your head tell where it's elastic and inelastic. Okay, you can do it either way. If you do it graphically, just make sure that you give me a graph, an, an accurate graph of that. Okay, all right, do we have any questions about that? Okay, let's go ahead and take a break for 10 minutes and come back, we'll... Do one more thing with elasticity then. So let's break until 9.35.